everybody. So sorry to be late, little technical difficulties, but we're going to jump right in. So what if I could say to you, I'm going to give you the one thing you need to get out of your comfort zone. And right now that comfort zone, I'm sure is in shock already. But the one thing I'm going to tell you to do, and in that one thing, I'm going to give you three skills. And when you do these three things, you will find your creativity, you will find your peace, your connection, and your mental clarity. And I know a lot of people have been talking about that today, and it all feels very esoteric and virtual and high right though. And what we're going to do, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you three actual skills, three things to do. And they're not like, think about your best day. They're actual things for you to do. So we're going to, I'm going to rush through those because I've only got 20 minutes to tell you how excited all these things. So the, the reason why I'm telling you this is because I've done them and I'm going to tell you the story in three acts. So the first act is back in 2013, I was this crazy Fortune 500 high performing salesperson. I was running all over the United States selling textbooks and talking to professors about their needs in the classes. I was number one salesperson like nine out of 10 years or 15 out of 20, I don't know, lots, just, I was crazy. As was my husband and my, and my daughter who was in fifth grade, we were on this type A personality running around and just achieving and succeeding everywhere. So in this, in the, in the, in the honor of that style, we decided we wanted to go on an around the world trip. So we both had a, a gazillion miles to cash in. So we cashed in all of our frequent flyer mileage and bought around the world tickets. These tickets are, you, you physically go either east or west around the world. You can stop six times and there's all kinds of rules, but we decided to take the month of April in 2013 and go around the world. We took our, our fifth grader out of school because the public school system said that she could miss 15 days in a row. So um, in the month of April, we had a week of spring break. We had 15 calendar days of school for a total of 30, and we were able to take her out of school without getting busted. So off we go in that type A personality, we go zipping around the world. The first place we go is Stockholm. And then we go to Norway, and then we go to um, Greece, and then we go to Moscow. <laughs> and when I in Moscow, and because of the rules of the tickets, we had eight days to spend in Moscow. So in our type A personality, we go running around, running around, running around, and we're doing all these things in Moscow, blah, 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 blah. And it's now five more days left of what to do in Moscow. So I Google um, free walking tours in Moscow, and I meet this lady. Um, she says, well, I'm going to take you around. You've probably been in Red Square because you've got all the guidebooks. I'm going to take you around the perimeter of Red Square, but it's not in the guidebooks, and I'm going to share my neighborhood with you. So she comes and meets with us. Her name's Vera. She's 21. We spend a couple of hours with her. We go around Red Square. We have a fabulous time. She's telling us all this great history, and it was all the wall falling and falling and all this stuff. Excuse me. And at the end of the tour, I go to pay her, and she won't let me pay her. She won't let me tip her. She won't let me buy a cup of coffee. She won't let me make a donation anywhere. She won't let me do anything. Like, well, this is value to me. You know what? I, and so finally I said to her, well, why did you do this? And she said to me, because when you know me and I know you and we're sharing the world together, we're creating peace. And shivers went up my arm, you know, goosebumps. And I was like, oh my God, this 21 year old just schooled me big time on how to slow the hell down. So we finished our trip. We had about a week left in our trip. And I got home and I realized lesson number one of life was when you're walking and you're meeting people, you are able to create peace. And that was my first lesson. So I have visuals. So here you go. There is my first quote. I don't know if this shows up or not. So, all truly great thoughts are conceived through walking. So that's Frederick Nietzsche. Nietzsche, Nietzsche, Nietzsche. Anyway, so here is the first thing I want you to do. This is your first skill to getting to that clarity. I want you to go into Google, and here is, can you see that? So this is my one mile radius challenge. So I want you to go to Google, and I want you to find your house in Google. Okay, so there's my house. And then I want you to measure a mile from your house. And if it's not a mile, and maybe it's two miles or five miles, whatever is relevant to you, a mile is a good place to start. And I want you to draw a circle around that mile. 
and identify all of the things that are within that mile. So within a mile of my house, I've got a school, a lake, a grocery store, a, a butcher, a pharmacy, a library, a post office, and so, so a park. And so I want you, as your first challenge, to draw this mile and commit to, if, if the thing you wanna do is within that mile or the two miles or whatever, I want you to commit to walking that in the next week. Put your car away, put your, well, you can bike if you want, but I prefer that you walk. Put your car away, get on your feet and go and walk in that one mile radius challenge, okay? Just go do it and commit to it. Every single time you need to go out, if it's within that one mile, you are walking. Or if it's in that two mile, if you're walking. Or expand it, if you're a walker already, expand it to five miles. Okay, act two. So we get back from, from Russia and shortly after that, I started seeing the writing on the wall that my job was going to go away. And my Fortune 500 top performing salesperson job was going to go away. Unfortunately, I didn't know exactly when, but the signs were on the wall. So I was trying to figure out what to do. And so I was sitting on my couch and I literally uh, got out a map, got out a map and opened up the map. In this case, this is a Highline Canal map. I opened up the map and I looked at it and it was all these trails from uh, Denver. I'm in Denver, it was the Denver Regional Trail System. And I thought, oh, maybe I'll go walk these. And so off I went, went to walk the trails. And lo and behold, what I found is two things. Number one, in Denver, if you're from Denver, uh, a lot of people hike in Denver and walk in Denver. If you're from Denver and people say to you, where do you want to go hiking? They will always tell you to go up into the front range. So Denver is very flat. And then next to the flatness are the Rocky Mountains. And so in the, rock, in the, the front range of the Rocky Mountains here in Denver, we call the front range. And so people will say, go to the front range. And so that means go up, you drive probably half an hour, 45 minutes at least on a good day, get up to a trailhead, hike up a mountain, uh, get into some higher elevations. So Denver's elevation is 5280. You're gonna get into probably 7,000 feet or more. Hike up to the top of the mountain, breathe, <laughs> drink water, suck air, take the picture, hike back down, get in your car and drive home. So on a good day to get in maybe a five mile hike or three to five mile hike, it takes you probably four hours with the driving and the waiting in the parking lot to find a parking spot and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, as I started walking all these Denver regional trails, so the Sand Creek, the High Line, the Platte, the Cherry, um, there was not a lot of information about them. There was like some information from the city, but nobody else had written about them. So I thought, hmm, if I'm walking these trails and I'm interested in them, I wonder who else would be interested in them too. So I asked a really critical question that I didn't even know was critical at the time. And that was, who else would want to know? Who else would want to know about this information? So I start walking and I get home and I already had a blog. It wasn't much, it was like got my travels, eatwalklearn.com, it's got my travels. And I start writing there. And then I start realizing that this was really important information. And so I start writing and then uh, a couple of people see my, my, what I've written and then now they want to hire me to lead groups on these trails that nobody knows about. And then all of a sudden an editor sees it uh, for a, a regional or a local publisher he sees it, then he calls me and he says, you know, this is really an important information. Would you write a book about urban hiking here in Denver? It's like, yeah. So I write that and then all the, then my, then my job goes away, but my job goes away right at the time that my little publishing empire, such as me, 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 myself and I, my publishing empire starts growing. And then pretty soon I've got another blog and I'm writing articles and people are asking me to present. And then another person asked me to do another book and all of a sudden, the idea of sitting on my couch and asking the question of who else would want to know this information turns into a whole business. And now I am the urban hiker of Denver and the walking traveler of the world. And I write about all these things, but it comes back to the second thing I want you to do. So here we go. Here's my next quote. Your intention rules your life and determines your outcomes. Okay. Your intention rules your life and determines your outcome. Oprah, she's a good one at that, huh? 
So what I learned in act two was I was going out to walk. I changed my intention to, I wonder who else would know. And that intention turned into an outcome of creating a giant, a giant, <laughs> a publishing empire, my own personal publishing empire. And it created a whole new career for me based on walking. Okay. So here is the second thing I want you to do. So the first was do your, your one mile radius challenge. The second, is, and I'm not an artist, you can tell, is this. Can you tell what that is? That is no headphones. When you're going out to walk, I know we are all so tempted to put on our, our favorite playlist or our favorite audio book or our favorite motivational speaker like me or something. Don't do it. When you can get out and walk alone without headphones on, all by your little old self, without your dog, without your kid, without your spouse, without your partner, and you go and walk by yourself, an amazing thing happens. You start connecting. You connect with your mind, you connect with your body, you connect with your soul, and then you connect with the world around you and the people around you and so on. It is like fairy dust. It is magical. I promise you this will happen. For me, it usually takes me about 25 minutes to find my fairy dust. But every single time I go, it happens every single time. I come back with a list of 9,000 brilliant, amazing, favorite, impossible, incredible ideas that are implementable, are actionable, and change my life that day. And every single day, I go out and walk. And every single day, I do it without headphones. And every single day, I come back with another brilliant thought. It energizes me. It provides me connection and opens up my world, All right? So, act three. Um, this, is the, the, this is the hard part of my story. So, you know, I'm a Fortune 500 crazy woman, and then I become the, the head motivator of my publishing business, and my 51st birthday comes. And I am thinking about my life and my 50, my birthday is on December 30th. So often on my birthday, I'm thinking about New Year's resolutions, visioning, those types of things for the next year. And so I decided that on my 51st birthday, my vision for the next year was going to be joyful and amazing. That was my theme. My theme was joyful and amazing. And I looked down, literally, at my muffin top and I'm like, you know, I've achieved all of these goals in my life. I've been very successful. I've had a very great life. But the one goal I've never been able to achieve is the healthy weight loss, weight management goal. And I looked down at this muffin top and I thought, you know what? I'm going to do something joyful and amazing. I'm going to throw up a crazy, crazy weight loss goal. You know, everybody has those on January 1st, five, 10 pounds. It's like, I'm going to lose 30 pounds. That's a big number. And I said to myself, I can't do it alone. I have to get help. So I signed up for a weight loss program. I'm not going to tell you who it is. doesn't matter. And it's a 16 week program. And I go and they give you a diet, you know, a restrictive diet. You eat so many calories and you exercise so much and you walk and all these things, which I did. And, and you meet once a week. And at that meeting each week, they made us work on something hard. Okay, first, the first question was like, um, what's important to you? You know, why do you want to lose weight and so on? And the number, I think it was about the third week, the question that they asked was, who's in your circle that supports you for being you? Who is trying to sabotage your weight loss? Who is threatened by you losing weight? These were like big questions. I didn't know how to answer them. So what did I do? I went out and walked. And again, yes, I was, you know, I was burning calories, walking, whatever. That wasn't the purpose of the walking. The walking was for the mental clarity that I would take these questions. I would go out and walk and I would think through the questions and I would 
walk and I would cry and I'd walk and I would laugh and I'd walk and I would sing and I walk again I don't have my headphones on I was able to dig deep into these questions because I was walking there was no distractions of the TV on the radio on the kid the dinner the husband the this the that I was out walking and I was able to get through these questions and I was able to, as I went through these questions the weight started to come off yes I was dieting that was like, you know, you lose calories in, calories out. That was absolutely working. But the reason why I was able to maintain the structure and the diet and the weight loss, because before I was eating for boredom, I was eating for stress, I was eating for emotions, I was eating because my mother called, I was eating because my dog wouldn't go out, I was eating because my kid was late, whatever. When I was out walking in this therapy, I was able to realize that those things were happening and my new behaviors need to change those. And it was the walking that did it, okay? Am I making myself clear? All right, so my third thing for you, so here's my quote. Adventure is a journey, not a destination. Adventure is a journey, not a destination. And I actually own this quote. That's my quote because I think it's awesome. And um, so the third skill I have for you, so that first skill, remember, was the one mile radius challenge. The second skill is to not listen to your headphones, take everything off and be tuned into you to get that connection. So first was the piece, the second was connection, and here is the third, okay? You are going to move walking as an activity to a lifestyle. What do I mean by that? So uh, we've all, we all walk, or you might roll, for all you who roll, I'm still thinking about you too, or use assistive devices or any mobility devices. This means you as well. Um, we've been doing walking or rolling since, you know, we were a year old, so we know how to do it. And we may even be at this point, if you follow my, my first two skills, you may come to the point where you are using walking as an activity, which is great. But now I want you to move walking from an activity to a lifestyle, right? Where you think about going to the grocery store and the first thought is how are you gonna walk there or how are you gonna carry home the groceries? You think about taking your kid to school and the first thought is how are we gonna walk to school? You think about you know, getting to work and the first thought is either how can I walk more or how can I walk further, right? So you're moving walking from a, an activity to a lifestyle. In that lifestyle choice, all of a sudden, you start making other decisions. So for example, you're, you think about the how to have fun, maybe it's now you're signing up for a 5K or a 10K, or maybe you're signing up for a new marathon or a half marathon, or maybe you become, um, you go on a walking vacation someplace. Maybe you go to England and you go, uh, the UK is great for being able to walk around. Maybe it's a walking vacation, or maybe instead instead of going to an all-inclusive resort, you think about going someplace that you can do some hiking in between the cities that you go to. So all of a sudden, hiking or walking becomes the lifestyle choice and not the activity. Does that make sense? So do me a favor if you if this makes sense to you, type me a little comment about what makes sense and why it doesn't make sense, or if you're going to do it. So. Uh, if you're in Denver, um, hi, <laughs> I'm glad to have you. If you're in the rest of the world, I just want you to be able to connect with me in the future. So if you're in the world, that's my, my social handle, Eat, Walk, Learn. If you're in Denver, you can go to Denver by foot. Um, I basically post the same content in both places, but one is from the world point of view and one is from the Denver point of view. So if you're looking for a place to walk or hike someplace in the world, go to the Eat, Walk, Learn. And then from the, if you're in Denver, go to Denver by foot. Um, somewhere, I think White, White Dove has done something fabulous by putting a link. Today I have, my book is free on Amazon. You can download it free, it's Travel Magic Postcards. It's just a cute little ebook about uh, travel magic. It's the, when there's this saying in hiking called um, uh, travel um, hiking magic, where if you're hiking a long distance, you might come across maybe someone's left your bottle of water or some M&Ms or something along the trail to a little trail magic. The, my book, Hiking Mag or uh, Travel Magic, is the same thing. It's the magical little stories that you maybe have come across 
as you've hiked or you've traveled around the world, they're my stories. So I want you to go and enjoy those. It's just a fun little happy, fun book that encourages you to get out and enjoy the world. Thank you everybody so much for joining me today. Thank you for Wiped Up for putting this on. Please follow me, ask me questions. I would love to hear from you and I hope you guys are having an amazing day and that you are able to follow those CDC guidelines and social distance guidelines and are able to get out and walk and enjoy your neighborhood. Thanks everybody.